What's up guys, this is Andy here with Ultima Eye Device Vids, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys 75 free jailbreak tweaks for iOS 9.3.3. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So first up we have Alkaline, this is one that a lot of you guys have probably heard of. As you can see it actually allows you to theme the icon indicator for your battery indicator in the status bar. And you can configure it to your liking if you head over to settings and go ahead and open up the alkaline preferences. Now in here, if you go into theme, there's a couple that it comes with as you can see right here. Uh, there's Habisha, uh, and then there's Bolus, which is one that I had, and then there's Spots, which is similar to the signal indicator. But let's change it to Habisha, and we'll go ahead and respring. And now as you guys can see up in the status bar there, it does look much different. And it's much more sp specific because the bar is actually going to like half mode there. And there's various, you know, custom things you could actually download from Cydia to apply to with this tweak. So it's a cool tweak for people who like to theme. The icon bounce is a cool tweak that essentially makes the icons down below in your dock there just do little flips and movements just like this, just to kind of keep the experience interesting. I also appreciate tweaks like this, again, just kind of keeping things lively. You know that feature in iOS where you could actually tap on the status bar to get to the top of a page? Well, Scrollers takes that to another level. Essentially, it makes it so when you tap on the left side, it goes to the top, but when you tap on the right side, it goes all the way to the bottom. So that's really cool. So you could just tap on different sides to essentially do different things. And if you want to, you could go to the Scrollers preferences here and essentially configure the left scroll direction or right if you want to swap it. But either way, really cool idea. Blord provides you with a system-wide dark keyboard. Looks really slick, especially if you have a dark theme enabled. And if you guys go into settings, you will find a Blord settings panel, which essentially just allows you to toggle it on or off. CC settings allows you to customize the toggles in your control center. And this is something people have been wanting to do ever since iOS 7 when control center was announced. And it also allows you to add tons of new ones. As you can see right here, we can actually scroll and we have tons of new toggles. So just for a couple examples here. We have a cellular data toggle right here, which is one that I know a lot of people want. Uh, and also and another one of my personal favorites is the personal hotspot toggle. If you're always using personal hotspot, it'd be useful to have this. And there's again, also tons of other ones in here and you can actually customize them to your liking. If you head over to settings and open up the CC settings preferences and in here, uh, there's an include section and there's a do not include section. You basically just drag them into do not include and rearrange the order just by dragging them like this and then they will show up in the order that you customize. You could also customize toggles per line if you want all the way up to six toggles per line, then of course it'll fit more in there as you can see like this, and there's some other settings as well. So this is a really awesome tweak. Flash is a really cool tweak. It essentially places a flashlight shortcut at the bottom of your lock screen when your iPhone is in a dark environment. So it uses the sensor to essentially gauge that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cover up the sensor with my hand to demonstrate it. And as you guys can see, boom, it just shows up right there. I can tap on it and it activates the flashlight just like that. And as soon as I'm back in a light environment, it's just gonna disappear naturally as you can see, just like that. Swipe selection is by far one of my favorite jailbreak tweaks of all time. It essentially allows you to move your cursor just by swiping your finger on the keyboard like this. And as you can see, the cursor will essentially move through text. It's so much better than having to tap and hold and use the magnifying glass. It's just so much easier, so much easier to use, so much better implemented as you can see right here. I could just jump anywhere in the text, you know, with a refined, you know, easy to, to control method. And if I want to highlight text, I could, I could essentially start swiping with the delete key and swipe this way and as you can see it's going to start highlighting text um, and also if I wanted to highlight text the other way I could just start swiping with the shift key and go the other way and it'll highlight it so just really cool tweak and the iPhone 6s with 3d touch does have a similar feature that allows you to 3d press on the keyboard and essentially move the cursor but this is much easier to use in my opinion and it's just much better implemented so I still use it on my iPhone 6s but cool tweak for everybody Activator is a huge component to essentially Cydia's ecosystem. It's a huge building block that is utilized that many tweaks depend on. So essentially it allows you to evoke different gestures to essentially perform different things. And there's just so many options within this tweak. It is insane. Like I can't even begin to touch the even tip of the iceberg on this but just in case you're, you're new to jailbreaking I'll show you guys kind of what the idea of the tweak is you design different actions to do different things so I'm just going to go ahead and show you I have it set so when I triple press my home button as you can see it comes up with a message sheet just like this I also have it set so when I shake my device it's going to open up the YouTube application so as you can see right there just like that so again there's so many other things you could do with this but just in case you're new to jailbreaking I wanted to mention it so activator must have absolutely 
Appendix is a 3D touch tweak that allows you to 3D touch on a folder and essentially it'll provide you with a list of the first four applications within that folder. You could of course just launch these applications right from that menu just like that very easily. And again, unfortunately it's not going to show you every app in the folder, but again it'll show you the first four. And again, it's just easy access to those applications. So cool tweak for 6S users. Better 5 icon dock allows you to have five icons down below in the dock. As you can see right here, I could just drag another one in there and it works just like that. So you could fit more applications down there and it also works with icon bounce as well. App color close essentially allows it so when you put your device in wiggle mode the little x that essentially will allow you to delete an application is the same color of the application that you're essentially about to delete. So you can see there the twitter x is actually a bluish tint because the app is blue. The youtube one is kind of pink because it's red and white etc. So very small touch but definitely a nice tweak. Circle icons provides you with circular icons in the settings app. So as you can see right there a very simple tweak but you know again if you have a theme that has circle icons this may fit well with that. PM really is a really cool tweak. Essentially, when you're inside the clock application and you're setting an alarm, and if it's set to PM as opposed to AM, and you click save, it's going to ask you PM really, do you really want to set that alarm for PM? Because of course, most people wake up in the morning AM for their job or whatever. So, you know, that, that's cool. If you know, you know, it might be an accident and it might get you in some serious trouble. So it's good to have this tweak installed. And if you want to select Nope, as you can see there, it's automatically going to change to AM. Then you could save it and you're good to go. AS Blur allows you to blur out applications within the app switcher. So if you're scrolling through your app switcher and you don't want someone looking over your shoulder, this tweak can help. Essentially, just jump into settings and then open up the AS Blur preferences. And you could just toggle on any application that you want to be blurred in the app switcher. So I'm just going to go ahead and toggle on, let's just say Cydia. And we'll toggle on the settings app as well, just for a demonstration here. So we'll find the settings app, toggle that on. So now, as you can see, when we jump into the app switcher, there you go. These two applications are blurred out, but again, you can see every other app just like that. So good tweak for privacy. SMS save allows you to save text messages or iMessages easily to your messages application so you could reference them later. Just go ahead and tap on any bubble inside a conversation. Then you're going to see a save button. Just tap on it. Then it'll say it's saved, just click OK, and then go back to your conversations list. And then you're going to see the little star up here, which is a new icon. Looks very native, by the way. You tap on it, and there you go. You'll see any message that you have right there. You could tap on it, and you'll get some information, uh, the number that you sent it to, the date, and you know, timestamp, just like that. And if you want to delete it, you could just swipe and hit delete. But it's just an easy way to essentially reference a message at a later time if you want to do that. A Yura LS is a really cool tweak. It essentially redesigns your lock screen and provides it with a nice new elegant, you know, design, I guess you could say. So as you can see right there, it has the time right in the middle, very simple. And my favorite part is if you have a passcode on your device and you slide to unlock, you get this really cool slick animation right there, as you can see. And of course, you could just slide back if you want to. But again, it's just very well designed, very nice animation. Then of course, you could either scan your touch ID just from here, or if you want to put in your passcode, you could just do that. And then it looks just like that. And it's a very simple lock screen tweak, but really nice design. Analog status provides you with an analog clock in your status bar. Just a nice little touch to make things a little bit classier, a little bit better to look at. You may have already noticed this one, but this one's called Cask, and it essentially provides you with really cool effects when you scroll through table views with you know numerous options like this anywhere in your device. So you essentially will have to add a beta repo in you know in Cydia to actually get this. It's Ryan Petrich's repo. I'll put it up on the screen right now, but really cool tweak. Now there's actually a couple modes if you go into the settings for it. Uh, you could go into style. I currently have it set on slide. That's my favorite, but there's stretch, which is a different one here. You can see it looks a little bit different. Uh, we also have grow, so a little bit different there as well. And if we go back into the settings here, I'll show you guys a few others. So we have fade, which is actually my least favorite. But again, you can set it to any of these ones that you want. Um, I'll just keep it on, let's just say stretch. That was a pretty nice one there, like this. So anyways, really cool tweak. Face down will essentially allow you to lock your device just by you know putting it face down. So if I just go ahead and go like this, you'll see what happens. So you heard there, when I put it face down, it actually locked. It actually gave us the lock sound. And if I, and if I pick it back up, it's actually automatically going to wake straight up. And you actually don't need to put it on a hard surface or anything like that. You could just do it midair even like that. Then you pick it up and it wakes straight up. So that's that's actually another really cool feature. It actually just wakes up as soon as it, it detects that you pick it up. So that's a really cool tweak as well. So again, really awesome face down. You could put it down to lock it. And also when you just raise it, even out of your pocket, it'll just go ahead and wake up for you. So kind of similar to iOS 10's raise to wake feature. 
power down essentially adds some new options to the power off screen when you hold down the power button. So as you can see right there, we have a cool animation when it comes into view. But essentially, we of course, we have slide to power off like we always do. But we also have slide to reboot, slide to respring, and slide to go into safe mode. So really useful if you're doing you know some of these other actions frequently. And it looks very native and very stock. And again, it just works so well. So really, really cool tweak. One of the best out there for essentially respringing, rebooting, and you know that kind of actions on your device. Of course, I can't get through a tweak video without mentioning Zeppelin. It's just a classic tweak. It allows you to customize the uh, basically your carrier logo, or essentially if you have an iPod or iPad, where it says iPod or iPad. And again, if it's an iPhone, it'll be the carrier you know logo there, the carrier indicator. So essentially, if you head over to settings on your device, you can open up the Zeppelin preferences. Then, of course, enable or disable the tweak, and then go into theme, and you have all of these awesome themes to choose from that come pre-installed with the tweak, but there's also ones you could download from Cydia. But as you can see right here, there's a lot of cool ones in here. We have Nike, you know, Cloud, Beats by Dre, just cool stuff like that. Let's just change it to Nike. And on iOS 9.3.3, I found that you sometimes have to lock your device and unlock it to get the change to apply, and also respringing could help as well, but... Anyways, really cool tweak there. I personally like the Apple just because, again, it looks really cool on an Apple device. But anyway, Zeppelin, really epic tweak. You got to have this. Barry C8 will essentially place application shortcuts on your lock screen. As you can see right here, we have some application shortcuts down here. Of course, you could customize them in the settings. Basically, you launch them up just by dragging the application down to the bottom of the screen like this and then releasing and it just opens up straight to that application just like that. This actually works particularly well if you have a Touch ID device and you have Touch ID enabled because essentially you could just drag the application down and then swipe your finger right onto the Touch ID to authenticate, again, if you have that enabled. So that's a really cool benefit of this tweak as well. And if you guys head over to settings, you could actually configure the applications and the Barry C8 preferences, just toggle it on. Then you want to go into app shortcuts and you can actually customize up to six at one page at a time. So you can customize different pages. And again, the maximum is six on one page. So you can go into shortcut number one, choose an application, just check it off. I have one checked right here. And then you could just go through here and customize the applications that you want. And then again, if you want to customize how many apps per page, you go to apps per page, and then you could change it from three all the way to six. Um, and essentially, there's also icon size as well if you want to configure that. So let's go ahead and configure, uh, let's just do, because we currently have five, we'll configure a sixth one. Let's just do camera, seventh, let's try FaceTime. And we'll change the apps per page all the way up to six for this. And now we'll just respring, and I'll show you guys what happens. Okay, so as you can see right there, we have a lot of applications down there, very easy to access, which is nice. And also, if we slide over, we essentially have another page as well with however many applications we want. So either way, really cool tweak. Definitely check it out. It's called Barry C8. Quickly get to your favorite applications. You know that annoying HUD pop-up when you adjust the volume on your device? As you can see, minimal HUD allows you to fix that. It essentially places it right on the side of the screen so it's not going to interrupt what you're doing in the middle of the screen. And if you guys head over to settings, there's a couple different themes if you open up the preferences panel for minimal HUD. Um, and I actually recommend you change it because as you can see, the iOS stock theme is not very easy to see inside of like a white background. And as you can see right here, it's very hard to see. So if you go into theme, you have iOS stock, warm, rainbow, and translucent gray. Translucent gray is easy to see. As you can see right here, when we turn it down, you can see the essentially when there's a lack of a little indicator there, it's just going to go ahead and fill it in with gray. There's also a rainbow one, just like that. That one's pretty easy to see. And then there's warm as well. So got some cool themes there, but e either way, it just fixes an issue with iOS. And again, it just stops interrupting whatever you're looking at on your screen. Pull to respring allows you to respring just by pulling to refresh inside the settings application like that. So it's an easy way to respring if you're constantly, you know, respringing for whatever reason. There's also a little toggle in the settings application I'll show you guys here that allows you to enable and disable the tweak. It's very simple. If I show you guys down here, it's just right here. Toggle it on or off. Record and Torch actually allows you to enable and disable your flashlight while you're recording a video. So as you can see here, I'm just going to go ahead and start recording a video. As you can see right here, it's actively recording, and I can still go ahead and tap this little flashlight indicator there, and it will go ahead and enable the flashlight like this. I can tap it again to disable it, just like that. And this is, again, all while I'm actively recording the same video. So that's a really cool addition. Maybe if you're going in and out of dark environments, this could come in handy. 
And yet another cool tweak for recording video is called record pause. And this is incredibly cool. Essentially, it allows you to pause a video while you're recording it. So as you can see right here, uh, basically I could just tap on the timer up at the top and it's gonna turn yellow and it pauses essentially that recording. And I could just tap again to resume it and it'll pick up within that same recording and it's not gonna create a separate file. It's all gonna be compiled, spliced together. So this is really cool, especially for someone who's enthusiastic about video. In some circumstances, this might actually remove the need to edit. So if you just know when you want to pause it, you could just tap pause and then resume it. And again, it's just a really, really cool tweak. It could definitely help you out if you're filming something live and you know what you don't want to be included. You could just pause it for that particular time period. Safari Be Better is a really cool tweak. Uh, basically, it provides some improvements to the mobile Safari application. So just a couple here. As you can see, the URL is showing in its full form. It's not going to be a shortened version right there, so that could be useful. I actually really like that feature. And also, as you can see right here, when I scroll up and down pages, you can see there the top and bottom bars don't automatically hide. And of course, you can configure these options within the settings for the tweak. So just go ahead and open up Safari Be Better. And of course, you have the Show Complete URL, which I talked about, and the Allow Bars Auto Hide option. If you want to disable that, you could turn that on. There's also auto hide bookmarks. I can't really seem to figure out what that does, but really cool options here in Safari Be Better. Definitely go check this tweak out. Safari tab count will essentially count how many tabs you have right within the window button in Safari. So as you can see, I have three right now. So a really cool tweak and it definitely looks like it belongs there. Swipe for more is a really useful tweak for Cydia itself. It essentially allows you to manage packages within Cydia much easier. Basically, if you swipe to the side on a package like this, as you can see, you're going to be getting options. You'll have install and queue install if it's a package that you haven't installed. But if it's something that you already have installed, you'll be getting this menu here. It says remove, queue reinstall, and queue remove. But let's just go back to a package that I don't have installed here. Essentially, this is really useful if you want to install multiple tweaks at the same time because you could just select queue install. As you can see, it's automatically going to queue it up for me. I, it's just, just that one tap of queue install and it's automatically queued. I could just keep doing this to queue up multiple tweaks like this. Boom, and it's just done. And same thing goes for removing tweaks as well. If I just want to remove a bunch of tweaks, I could swipe. Uh, I could hit queue remove and as you can see there automatically queues it to remove just like that or reinstall or remove or anything like that so either way really cool tweak for managing packages bread crumbs away allows you to dismiss bread crumbs and essentially bread crumbs are when you get when you get redirected from one application to another application that little link that says back to the previous app you could essentially dismiss those with this tweak so i'm just going to go ahead and I'll open up a, no a notification here and it's going to redirect me from settings to messages. As you can see right there, it does say back to settings. Basically with this tweak, all I have to do if I want to get rid of that back to settings is I just swipe it to the side like this and there you go, it's gone. So very easy to do. Next up, we have blurry badges. This will actually make badge notifications on applications the same color of the app that they're on. So you can see their app store is blue. Um, the messages application is green. FaceTime is green as well. So cool tweak. Front flash essentially allows you to use your device's screen as a flash when you're taking photos with the front facing camera. Now, the iPhone 6s and 6s Plus have this feature by default, but if you guys have an older device, you could go ahead and use this to essentially obtain that. So let's go ahead and enable the flash at the, towards the top of the screen, then just go ahead and take a photo. And as you guys can see, it actually lights up the screen and utilizes that as the flash. Unlock of all will essentially allow you to control your volume, you know, and have that volume HOD pop up right on the lock screen. As you can see right here, normally that actually doesn't work on the lock screen. You have to go ahead and pull up the control center to do so. But again, now you can just do it with the buttons and it'll show up as it normally does. CC background allows you to assign an image to be placed in the background of your control center so you could so you could create a really nice you know looking control center um, so it's just a pretty incredible tweak to design your device as you can see everything works the exact same here but again I have this cool space wallpaper in the background and by the way if you guys want to get this image I'll put a link to it down below in the description but again everything works the exact same to essentially set this up just go ahead and save an image to your camera roll then jump over to settings, head over to CC background, and then make sure the tweak is enabled. Hit select image, just select your image in here. And then once you've done that, just go and select done and your device will respring. There's also some options for a landscape mode, whether you want to have it try to show the image on the screen or just no image in landscape. Because of course, it's a different layout in landscape and things might not work properly. But I'll show you guys here with this particular one, it looks pretty decent. So I recommend you at least try landscape mode. CC clean allows you to clean up control center. So as you can see here, my control center, you might notice looks a little bit cleaner. As you can see, there's no separators anywhere. It's all just a clean panel. And also that little grabber at the top is gone. So that's just some of the things you could achieve with this tweak. There's a lot you could do with it. If you head over to settings and then open up CC clean, as you can see, you have tons and tons of options you could basically configure to make it look cleaner. You could hide um, the, you know, the background to make it look again. So there's no separators. 
Um, you could hide labels for different things for AirPlay, as you can see right there. There's no labels in it anymore. It's just the little logos there. And there's some other options in here. You could hide other things down here. So as you can see right there, you could just hide various things and then just respring once you're done. So just a cool tweak to kind of keep that control center looking a little bit more uniform and clean. Delete cut allows you to delete whole words in an easier fashion. Normally in iOS, when you tap and hold the delete key, you can eventually, if you hold it for long enough, you can see it'll eventually start to delete whole words at a time. But if you want to just have a reliable way to delete words, you know, just one word at a time, just by a sim single tap on the delete key, essentially with this tweak, you can just tap and hold on the shift button, then the delete key will turn red. And in this state, when you just tap this button, as you can see there, it's just going to delete one word at a time, just with a tap like this, one word at a time, very simply. Mini time essentially simplifies the lock screen clock view. So as you can see up at the top here, we have a much cleaner look as opposed to the bigger view. We just have the time on, or the time on the side and the date and some other information on the other side. So that's the first you know theme. There's two themes that come with this tweak, and I'm personally a big bigger fan of the other theme, which I'm going to show you right now. So if you if you open up settings, you could go into mini time, and then of course there's this theme, which is a simple theme. And then there's M I U I. So of course, make sure the tweak's enabled, but just go ahead and change to the theme that you want, then go ahead and respring. There's a respring tool down here, so you could just go ahead and select respring. So now I want to show you guys again the other theme with this, which I'm actually pretty fond of. I think this is a pretty slick look. As you can see right there, it looks pretty decent all the way over to the side there, and it's a little bit easier to read. And also, there's some other settings and the uh, MIDI time preferences if I show you guys down here. Um, as you can see... You can basically hide certain elements to the lock screen if you want it to make if you wanted to make it look cleaner in that regard just by hiding different things that you may not want. Nimrov essentially allows you to change the screenshot animation when you take a screenshot. So essentially it allows you to change that boring white flash to anything that you want. So here's the checkerboard one right now, pretty cool. Uh, and also if you guys head over to settings and open up Nimrov's preferences panel, you can enable or disable the tweak. Then you can go into animation, and then you have various to choose from as you can see right here. Let's just try out a few. Here's Triforce. There you go. And then let's just try shrink as well. And we'll try expand. So, so there's all kinds of cool stuff you could check out. Here's double color flash. There you go. So again, lots of cool stuff. My personal favorite is the checkerboard, but cool tweak just spices up that animation that you know you, you usually can't change. There's also some color configuration down here if you want to change that. Speed intensifier allows you to speed up the animation speed when you pretty much do anything on your device. So as you can see here, when I open and close applications, it takes an effect for this. And also when you, of course, lock and unlock your device, as you can see, it takes an effect there as well. Even opening up sub menus, as you can see right there, it's much faster. So in the settings for speed intensifier, there's various different degrees of speed you could set. So as you can see, you could go all the way up to X9. And then there's infinity, which is basically no animation at all. And there's also a bunch of you know other settings up here. But either way, as you can see, it just really speeds up your device. You know that's always a big complaint of mine with iOS how the animations are slowed down. But this completely obliterates that issue. Swipey folders superchargers your iOS folders experience. So essentially, it allows you to set up different gestures you could perform on your folders to do different things. For example, I have it set so when I tap on a folder, it automatically opens up the first app within that folder, in this case, Compass, as you can see right here. And also notice that the preview of the folder is pretty much taken over by that first application. I also have it set so when I swipe up on the folder, it's going to go ahead and open up the folder normally like that, as you can see, swipe up. And I have it set so when I swipe down, it's going to open up the second app within the folder just like this. And this is the tips app in my case. And again, you can see there when I open up the folder, it is the second app. So really cool. It pretty much just supercharges your folders. So if you guys open up settings, you can configure what gestures do, you know, what task in the Swipey folders settings. So make sure, make sure the tweaks enabled in here. And then down here, you have functionality. So these are the gestures. You have single tap, swipe up, swipe down, double tap, short hold, and 3D touch. You could, again, assign to any of these actions. So the actions are open folder, open first app, open second app, quick action on the first app, or nothing. So really cool tweak. I, you know, I, I definitely appreciate using this. It just kind of speeds up your experience if you know what app you want to get to. And there's also some other settings within the preferences panel that you can configure to your liking as well. Spin settings actually makes the settings icon spin on your home screen. So really, really cool tweak brings the home screen to life. Nano charging view will port the Apple Watch charging interface to your lock screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug my device in here to a charger and I'll show you guys. There you go. It has that same little circle from the Apple Watch there just to indicate that your device is charging. And when you wake up your device when it's asleep, it'll show for a second there. Boot screen customization allows you to customize the respring logo on your device. So when the app logo comes up for a second, 
lets you customize that. Unfortunately, it does not work for reboots. Unfortunately, again, it's just resprings. So just jump into settings to set this up. Go into boot screen customization. And in here, make sure the tweak's enabled. And then you want to go to select, hit custom, then go to the next button that says select and hit custom as well. So the first one's for the app logo, second one's, second one's for background. So just go in here, choose the color, drag it around until you find the color you want, hit done. Same thing for the second one here. Once you're satisfied with your colors for the app logo in the background, hit apply. And immediately, as you can see right there, it applies just like that. Now, I know it's ironic that this doesn't work on the boot screen because it's called boot screen customization. However, the reason that is is because essentially, because with this jailbreak, you actually have to run the jailbreak application, the Pengu app, whenever you actually reboot your device. Essentially, it only works for resprings. And also, even you know with pre past jailbreaks, it only worked for a few split seconds right before your device booted up. So it didn't work for the whole process to begin with. So again, I just wanted to let you guys know why it doesn't work for rebooting. Disable parallax effect will completely disable the parallax effect. So in iOS, there's a couple settings you can enable. Uh, for example, you could go into the wallpaper settings and basically turn it so the wallpaper is still as opposed to having the parallax effect. But even if you do that, the there's still going to be a slight movement when you tilt your device around on the home screen. However, you know, you can go into settings and essentially enable reduce motion to completely disable it. However, at that point, then you're forced into these fading animations. But with this tweak, you can still have all the normal animations that zoom, but it essentially will also disable the parallax effect. So again, if you like these zooming animations and everything to work normally, but you just don't like that parallax effect, this is a perfect tweak for you. So on the Apple Watch, when you basically enable the toggles, uh, as you can see, they actually have colors when they're on just like that. And that's a really cool feature. They're colorized toggles. And Cream, which is a city of tweak, of course, brings that to iOS. So as you can see right here, when I toggle on the toggles there, it's that same exact effect. So they have that nice color to them just like that, and it looks really nice. And Apple also implemented this into iOS 10, so you're getting ahead of the curve with this tweak as well. New tab keyboard is a really cool tweak. Whenever you go ahead and open up a new tab in Safari, as you can see, it brings up the keyboard right away. So it makes perfect sense. I mean, you, you still have access to all your you know shortcuts up here you could go ahead and go to, but you also have access to the keyboard just in case you want to type something. So it makes perfect sense, really useful tweak. Photo size allows you to determine how much space photos and videos inside your camera camera roll are taking up. So basically how it works is you just go ahead and hit select like you normally would and when you select anything inside your camera roll it's going to tell you how much space it's taking up. So if I just tap on anything as you can see right there up at the top right where it says one item and also says how much space it's taking up and it looks so native it just looks like it belongs there. That's what I really love about this tweak. And if I just keep tapping on them as you can see it's just going to add all them up and I could also just drag like this using the new feature in iOS 9 and as you can see it's just going to tell me how much however much I have selected is worth or how much space is taking up. So really, really useful to for those of you who are carefully managing your storage. Safari close all tabs allows you to close all the tabs in Safari with a simple little X button that it adds right down here next to the add tab button. Just tap on the X, select close tabs, and then all the tabs are closed just like that. And then there's also a feature that allows you to essentially whitelist certain tabs if you want to keep certain tabs open all the time. So let me show you guys what I mean here. So I have two tabs open. Or actually, let's just make a third one. Let's just do another one for Google as well. And let's say I wanted to have one of these tabs stay open. Essentially, if I just tap and hold on it with two fingers like this, as you can see, the little uh, lock icon appears in red there. Now, the other ones have gray lock icons. So now when I go ahead and you know execute the close all command, as you can see, the one that's in red will stay open no matter what. So either way, really cool tweak lets you manage your Safari tabs. Personal Spotlight allows you to customize Spotlight search to your liking. So if you guys go into settings on your device and then open up Personal Spotlight, there will be various toggle switches in here. Uh, basically, when you first install this, every, everything will be enabled. So just go ahead and disable everything and then just then check the ones you want manually. As you see, there's just tons and tons of options for, for your liking. So basically, the one that I keep on all the time is Clear Search on Dismiss. So I'm just going to go ahead and toggle that one on and I'll hit Respring. As a matter of fact, it's really the only one that I use out of this list. Okay, so normally when you're searching for something in Spotlight Search, for example, let's just search for the settings app for a demonstration. Normally, if I tapped on the settings application or whatever my result was, and then I went back to Spotlight Search, normally my typing that I was typing before would still be there. But this tweak, as you can see, if you enable that toggle, clear search on dismiss, it will automatically clear it for me. So that's a really useful feature. It just keeps things tidy. But anyways, Personal Spotlight allows you to do so much more, but that's just my personal favorite option. Transparent Dock will do exactly what it says. It essentially makes your dock transparent, so it could go for a nice look, especially if you have a nice wallpaper and you want to be able to see that, as opposed to having that blurry dock. 
Color Safari Progress allows you to change the color of the loading bar in Safari. So to set it up, just go ahead and jump into settings and then open up Color Safari Progress and make sure the tweak's enabled. Then just hit select color and select the color using this wheel. And once you're satisfied with your color, just go ahead and tap down below here. And after you've done that, just go ahead and relaunch the Safari application. So if it's open, just go ahead and double click, swipe up to close it. Now when you go ahead and open up the Safari application, as you can see there, the loading bar will be the color of your choice. In my case, it's red. And you know, it's a very small touch, but if you have a theme that involves a lot of a particular color, this, this could definitely come in handy. Going along with the theme of changing the color of things, we have color switches. This allows you to change the color of toggle switches in iOS. Just make sure it's enabled, select the color of your choice using this section in here, and then select restart springboard, then everything will go ahead and take an effect. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and show you guys if I toggle on, let's just say Bluetooth here, there you go, as you can see, I have the red toggle switch. Pinch to close essentially adds a pinch to close gesture to your folder. So now you can just pinch like this to close the folder, as you just saw. <laughs> Nude keys is a very cool tweak that essentially allows you to customize the color of your keyboard. However, it does more than that. It essentially allows you to customize the bottom color and the top color. So as you can see, and then they kind of blend in the middle. So it goes for a really nice mix. I have, you know, a red, you know, type color at the top and then a bluish type color on the bottom. And again, it just meshes very well together. So also you notice that the key, you know, borders and separators are gone as well. So that just goes for a really clean look as well. And as you can see, the pop-up keys are very nice as well. So just super awesome looking keyboard. To set it up, head over to settings and then open up nude keys. And in here, you want to make sure you toggle on a background color enabled. And then you have the top color and the bottom color that you could actually just use their presets to choose the color that you you want again towards the top and towards the bottom there's also the color alpha for the top and the bottom as well uh, and after you make any changes here just make sure you select the respring button i'm just going to show you guys if i make any kind of adjustment as you can see there it automatically says respring you tap that and then it'll apply round dock adds this nice effect to your dock where it's curved on the sides there as you can see it's not just you know a rectangle essentially it just has a nice little curve on the sides, and there's a little bit of space in between the bezels so nice touch Safari Refresh allows you to enable a pull to refresh gesture in Safari to refresh the page. This is incredibly convenient on a larger iPhone with a larger display because it might be hard to reach that refresh button all the way in the corner. Again, you could just slide down like this easily to refresh. Fuse has become one of my new favorite jailbreak tweaks of all time. It essentially redesigns the lock screen music playing interface. So as you guys can see right here, it looks pretty different than the one we're normally used to. So here's a direct comparison of the way that it normally looks. So essentially, as you can see here, this tweak moves the, you know, all the controls that you're actually going to be interacting with towards the bottom of the screen. So all the play, pause, skip, you know, scrubber controls, everything like that is down here. And it's easily accessible with one hand. So that's great. Of course, you still get your album artwork in the middle and you still get a very large clock and date right here so it makes perfect sense and for some reason with the normal one the controls are towards the top which just does not make sense with a larger screen device or for that matter even a smaller screen device it's just easier to access down here and the album artwork is in the middle and there's no big clock even though there's plenty of space as this tweak shows it's forced into this little small one in the status bar so apple could really <laughs> learn something from this tweak in my opinion so once again it's called fuse much better lock screen music playing interface 20 second lock screen essentially allows you to customize how long your lock screen will stay awake. Just open up settings and configure it, then open up the settings panel for it. And essentially in here, as you can see, we have dim time, which is basically just how many seconds it is. By default, it's set to 20, of course. Then you, also, you, you could also have a different one set when your device is docked or charging. So when it's on a dock or when it's charging. But either way, just configure it to your liking. And now when you go to your lock screen, it'll stay awake for however long you set it. And this could be convenient because maybe you, you know, have a bunch of notifications on your lock screen that you want to look at for a while. Or maybe you're just frustrated, you know, when you're looking at your lock screen for whatever reason, the time or basically anything on it, maybe it goes to sleep, you know, too fast. And I've definitely had instances like that. So this week is perfect for those times. As you can see right here, it's just staying on indefinitely until, you know, however, how long I configured it to passes. Byte of Font 3 allows you to change your system font in iOS. As you can see right here, I have a custom font enabled right now, and it makes everything look completely different. You know, just applications, the home screen, just kind of breathe some fresh life into iOS. And there's tons of themes you could download from Cydia, and essentially you just use Byte of Font 3 to enable them. So to enable a theme, just open up the application that it puts on your home screen, then jump over to Swap Mode, select Basic, and then any theme that you install from Cydia will show up in here, and then just select it, and then hit Yes, and then your device will respring. Now if you want to go back to the you know stock font in iOS, just select Beta Font Backup, and then select Yes, then it'll go back to the way it was, after respring, of course. 
Status bar timer is another one of my personal favorite tweaks. Essentially, when you set a timer inside the clock application, this tweak will place a live countdown in the status bar, as you can see right here. So this is useful, you know, if you're browsing around your device inside of applications on the home screen, you could always just have an awareness of where your timer is at. And on the lock screen by default in iOS, it does actually put the timer there, which is nice. However, there's an issue with that. When you start playing music on your device and you go to the lock screen, normally the timer wouldn't be there. However, this tweak fixes that. As you can see, it's always going to be just right in the status bar as it was before. So, for example, when I go for a run, I always like to keep, you know, an eye on how, what my timer is set at because that's what I do. I set it and then I stop when it's over. This tweak is convenient because I don't have to always keep opening up the clock application. So, very convenient tweak. Priority Harb helps you keep your lock screen notifications neat. Essentially, it will break up your notifications on your lock screen on a per app basis. So, whichever apps you have notifications for will show up right here. I have FaceTime and Messages. And basically, I could just tap on any application and it's essentially just going to show me the notifications from that one app. So, I have Messages and FaceTime. And again, I could just switch between these two and see any notifications for, you know, each of those particular apps. Uh, normally, everything is just clustered together and it's kind of a mess. So, this definitely makes things cleaner. And it also has a great design as well. How it shows you the number of notifications there and the icon. Next up, we have Emojit. This essentially makes your emojis much larger. As you can see right here, we have huge emojis. And this is actually a feature in iOS 10 as well, so you could get ahead of the curve with this tweak as well. Uh, so there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. You guys will need to add a beta repo to Cydia in order to install this tweak. It's the same repo that I talked about earlier. It's Ryan Petrich's repo. I'll put it up on the screen again. And also keep in mind that the average person is not going to be able to actually see the large emojis, unfortunately. So if someone else is on an iOS 9 or earlier version, unfortunately, they're still going to be seeing the small emoji. However, if they have this tweak installed, of course, they will see the large ones. And also, if they're running iOS 10, of course, they will also see the large ones. But again, just for regular iOS 9 and below users, it's not going to transfer to other people. But it's still a really cool tweak, and of course, with iOS 10, everyone else will eventually catch up. Last app essentially allows you to perform an activator gesture to automatically open up the last application that you had open. So essentially to set it up, just jump into activator and you know go into anywhere and choose any gesture. I'm going to use a triple press of the home button. Then again, you'll see last app in here. Just tap on that. So now whenever you go ahead and perform the gesture that you set up, it's going to go back to again last application, the previous app that you had open. So I'm going to go ahead and triple press my home button because that's what I just used. As you guys can see, it takes me straight back to the messages application, which was the last app I was in. And if I triple tap again, of course, it's going to go back to activator. So there you go. It also works when you're not inside an application. As you can see right there, it works from there. And it even works from the lock screen, as you guys can see right here. There you go. Next up, we have 3D Touch to clear notifications. And, well, it allows you to 3D Touch to clear notifications. And I, this is one of my personal favorite tweaks. I use this all the time. It's so convenient. Um, so Apple actually did implement this into iOS 10. However, there's a limitation on the iOS 10 version. You actually have to 3D Touch on the little X to, to make it work. But with this tweak, you could 3D Touch anywhere in the notification center, and it will work. So it's very convenient. You just go like this, 3D Touch anywhere, and it gives you the option to clear all. And there's a really cool animation, as you can see, when we 3D Touch, you know, just like that and then you can just hit hit clear all and it's just done so if your notification center is often getting messy this is very convenient you could just 3d touch and clear everything app delete is a brand new city it's week and it's actually very useful it essentially allows you to disable the little x icon from showing up on specific applications that you don't want it to show up on maybe you have a certain application that you don't want someone you know deleting without your permission or something so you could go ahead and fix that with this tweak so just jump into settings to set it up and then open up uh, app delete and then in here just go into applications and then essentially it'll show you any application that you have installed from the app store so i'm just going to go ahead and toggle on youtube for a demonstration so now as you can see when i go ahead and enter wiggle mode it's just not going to show an x as you can see right there the youtube app simply doesn't show that so again if you have a certain application on your device that you do not want people deleting this is perfect for that marquee allows you to basically view a very long folder title if you have one set so as you can see right here uh, it'll actually just scroll to show you the entire thing. Normally in iOS, if you have a really long folder title, as you can see, it just says dot, dot, dot. But this will actually scroll like this. I don't know why you'd have a folder title this long, but if you do, this is something you should check out. Next up, we have always first swipe. So basically, normally in iOS, when you're watching a video or you're playing a game that's full screen, when you go ahead and swipe down for notification center or swipe up for control center, nor normally there's a little grabber that appears, and you have to actually swipe it a second time to actually get notification center or control center to show up. This essentially removes that, and now, as you can see, when you pull down for notification center or pull up for control center, it just opens automatically. Uh, obviously, a downside to this would be you might accidentally activate them when you don't want. Um, however, if you never run, it, run into that, that issue at all this is definitely something you should try also after you install the tweak you want to make sure you head over to settings and then just go ahead and scroll down until you find 
always first swipe, open it up, but just make sure you enable it on Control Center and Notification Center uh, because by default it's not enabled. AK messages will essentially make it so the keyboard opens as soon as you tap into a message thread inside the messages application automatically. So as you can see right here, you no longer have to tap towards the bottom, it just opens up automatically. Better five column home screen essentially allows you to have five applications going across on your device as opposed to four. And as you can see, you could just fit so many more applications on one page using this tweak. So I'm going to go ahead and move all the apps from this page to this page, and I'll go ahead and show you that in a second. So coincidentally, everything just happened to fit perfectly. As you can see right here, uh, again, there's just so many more applications on the home screen, and everything's very easily accessible. It's not like I'm struggling It's you know, because things are too small. It just makes more sense this way. So really cool tweak. And by the way, of course, it goes perfect with Better 5 Icon Dock as well. I should have mentioned that earlier, but really awesome tweaks combined. Better 5 Column Home Screen, Better 5 Icon Dock. Haptic feedback allows you to add haptic feedback to your device. Uh, essentially, haptic feedback is vibration when you do certain things. So if you jump into settings and then open up haptic feedback, you have the ability to enable or disable a tweak. Then you basically could configure when you want your device to vibrate when you do certain things. So you could have it when you push the lock button, the home button, volume buttons, keyboard touches, music controls, icons when you tap them or when you unlock your device. So I'll just click the lock button, and then of course it has haptic feedback because that's enabled, and again, you can enable any of these, and it will happen. I can't really show you, but you know, if you guys want haptic feedback, definitely check this out. Imperial allows you to tap into Apple's suggested apps and handoff view to essentially assign an app of your choice to always be there. So basically on the lock screen in the corner, uh, you know, where the application shows up here. And again, this is either for handoff usually or a suggested app. But again, this tweak lets you assign any app to be there. I have it assigned for the App Store. So of course, I could just drag up here and it'll open up the App Store. It also shows up in the App Switcher towards the bottom, as you can see right there. And again, this is the native, you know, view, but this tweak taps into it. So I could just slide up on this to open it or I could just tap on it like that. And to set up the app that you want to be there, just jump into settings and then open up Imperial, make sure the tweak is enabled. And then of course you could override Apple's suggestion if you want to, then you could go ahead and select the app of your choice and you're good. You probably just heard my dog barking in the background, but anyways, next up is Lock Beam. This essentially allows you to activate the flashlight on your lock screen easily, just with a double tap in the middle of the screen. And as you can see, it activates the flashlight and the screen dims automatically. I can just double tap again to disable it. So very easy way to, to access the flashlight, certainly much easier than sliding up to the control center and doing it here. Now you can actually configure how many taps uh, it is required for the flashlight to turn on in the settings. So just go ahead and find a lock beam and in here, uh, make sure the tweaks enabled. Then you could also go to number of taps and you have uh, anywhere from two to five. Rosero 9 is a brand new tweak as well and it essentially uh, shrinks down your notification banners to the size of the status bar itself. And it's so much better because it doesn't obtrude on anything you're looking at. So let me go ahead and show you here. I'm just gonna go ahead and send myself a message. And as you guys can see right there, it's so much much cleaner you know it's very readable too but again it doesn't interrupt anything you're doing on your device so of course you can still tap on it if you want to to open it up so very much improved banner experience and our last two tweaks are 3d touch tweaks so this one's tactful it essentially adds 3d touch support to Cydia so on the home screen it actually adds support for you know shortcuts as you can see here we have search Cydia recent installations add repo and refresh repos you can just tap on any of those things and again it'll work perfectly so that's really awesome and it also adds peek and pop support to the Cydia app itself which is really cool so we could actually peek into packages as you can see right here just like this and then release and then we could also slide up to remove it or install it and then just pop all the way in if we wanted to like that now, I found with this tweak, it actually helps to 3D touch and then like roll your finger down a little bit and then it works a little bit better. But either way, it's really cool to have this. It also works from the search view as well. So let's just go ahead and search for a tweak and we could peek into it like this. So super cool. And last but not least, we have force color. This essentially will make the entire screen the color of an app when you 3D touch on it. So because I just 3D touched the App Store icon, the entire screen is kind of a blue shade because the App Store app is blue. Uh, Snapchat, of course, because it's kind of a yellowish app, the entire screen has a yellowish tint. So it's just, you know, it's a nice touch to iOS uh, just to kind of bring the screen to life when you 3D touch on different icons. Whew, that was a long list. <laughs> um, you know, but again, I really wanted to show you guys as many tweaks as I possibly could in one video. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you found some decent tweaks that you're going to enjoy using. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to this channel for many more videos pertaining to jailbreaking iOS and so much more. Also, make sure to follow the channel on Twitter, like it on Facebook, and also make sure to follow me on Twitter. I'll put all those links down below in the description. And again, I really appreciate you guys watching such a long video. It means a lot to me. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.